Thank you, Ron. Here at Peoria, Bradley has jumped off to an 8 nothing lead. The battle for the Missouri Valley Conference lead. And we have a 20-second timeout with Bradley jumping to this early lead. The Alcoa starting lineup for Illinois State. Jamar Smiley, their guard out front. Maurice Trotter, their big scorer. Dan Muller and Rico Hill in the corners. And Kenny Wright at the center spot. For Bradley, Billy Wright, an equally adept point guard with the assist. Anthony Parker in the corners. Dwayne Funches, Deion Jackson, and Bio Akinkula, the center, the 6'8 sophomore. The head coaches, Kevin Stallings, out of Purdue in his third year for Illinois State. Bradley, headed by Jim Molinari, fifth year here at Bradley for Molinari with a record of 79 and 63. This Illinois game. State with a basketball. This game is already uncharacteristic of the first meetings between these teams. The Redbirds against Bradley earlier in January, there was only five points separating these teams the entire game. The Redbirds won that game by five. Muller has the ball stripped by Anthony Parker, but we have a whistle. A foul against Parker. Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois. Bradley has been the best home team in the conference, and Illinois State has been the best road team in the conference. And there's a look at the 41-year-old Jim Molinari. Seventh year overall as a Division I head coach. Fifth year here at Bradley. Bradley returns a veteran team. They have five starters, and their top nine scorers are back from last year's NIT team that went to the third round and lost to Canisius. There's a jumper by Muller, not going to go. The ball loose, it'll go out of bounds, belonging to Illinois State. Along with a bath for us, we got a little water over here. <laughs> Muller will inbound. Illinois State won the first match of the year between these two teams, 77 72. Illinois State is a very patient team on the offensive end. And they're finally on the board. Rico Hill with a jump shot. Kevin Stallings worked as an assistant for five years under Roy Williams and also an assistant at Purdue University for six years. Funches underneath rolls the rim it out, but a whistle there. Ed Hightower calling the foul. Trying to get the ball inside. Every opportunity. Bradley wants to get the ball down on the block and try to get that high percentage shot. As a team, they only shoot about 45-46% from the field but they feel like if they're going to win this game, they have to utilize the inside strength. The foul called on Muller, and Funches goes to the line, 65% on the year, and the first one will not drop for him. Funches, a senior out of Chicago Orr, averaging just under 11 and a half points a game. Misses both shots, and the ball down to Watkins. Leroy Watkins in there at center for Illinois State. Smiley across the top of the key. This is Maurice Trotter, and it's stolen. Picked away by Parker. Parker starts back for Bradley. Maurice Not Trotter. Line. Maurice Trotter, such an exciting player. He has the ability to play outside or inside. Bunches grabbed the rebound. Got a whistle on the battle for that rebound. And will walk it the other way. The foul against Bunches for reaching over. He was reaching over Watkins. Watkins has got to come out and get a little bit of a rest. Arkin Kule into the game. He's the 6'8 sophomore. Arkin Kule is a very aggressive player, good shot blocker, but he's fouled out of three games this year. Watkins misses the shot. The tip by Jackson and Arkin Kule came down to the ball to ride into the front court. Anthony Parker across to right. Hawking Kule trying to back his way in. And Watkins got up there to block it, but a whistle as well. And the foul coming. So Hawking Kule will go to the free throw line. That's a good job of spacing by the Braves that time to move the ball around the perimeter. Make the extra pass, extra pass. And Hawking Kule catches it on the block. And he's 6'8", but he's only about 205 pounds. That's why he wasn't able to power the ball up to the basket. Kenny Wright into the game, replacing Watkins. 
Back in Kule, a 68% free throw shooter, misses this one. So Bradley off to a slow start at the line. They have the best free throw shooting percentage in the Missouri Valley at 72%. Back in Kule, drops this one in. It's a 9-2 ball game with 15.57 to play in the first half. Bradley out in front. There's one only person to use when you're extra, extra close. Arid, extra, extra dry. The one only person you can trust to give you Arid Double X protection to help stop perspiration before it turns into embarrassing odor. And when you help stop perspiration and odor, who knows what you might start? So come on, go ahead. Use Arid Extra, Extra Dry and get a little closer. If you're going on a business trip, there's one thing you shouldn't forget. To rent a car from Dollar. Because when you rent on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, Dollar will give you double frequent flyer miles. Which you can use to go someplace where you can forget everything that has anything to do with business. Double frequent flyer miles. Just one more reason Dollar makes sense. Make sure you stay in the chariot, Chuck. I guarantee you're going to win the dang race. <laughs> <laughs> it's true story. Oh, yeah. You are so special. That chariot thing you did and the water stuff. <laughs> I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light. Frankly, son, you frighten me. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And it's more like, I love you, man. <laughs> See? With Derek Dickey, Dwayne Stats from Peoria, Illinois State, down 9-2 to the home team, Bradley Braves here. First place on the line in the Missouri Valley Conference, Bradley and Illinois State coming in with identical records of 13-3. They have each have one conference game left after this one. They're well ahead of Tulsa and Southwest Missouri State. Well, a lot of people think that Tulsa was going to be the team to beat this season coming off of a Sweet 16 NCAA berth last year, but... Uh, Unfortunately, Bradley has come out very strong this season. Their overall record is 18 and 6. They have a great chance of going to the NCAA tournament. Maurice Trotter has a pass knocked away. Another turnover. That's four Illinois State turnovers to the basket. It's going to count and a whistle and a foul. Count the basket for Anthony Parker. Charge the foul to Smiley. This is an excellent transition break. When you get the ball on the break, you want to try to find your score. A guy who can get to the front of the rim. Anthony Parker is the man. He's been that all season, averaging 19 points a game. Well, Bradley jumps to an early nine-point lead. And they say Parker, Parker averaging over 19 points, leading the team. This one in. It's a 10-point spread for Bradley. Braves are good, doing a good job defensively, and it's also going to be important for them to control their defensive boards. Muller from long range. Not going to go. And the rebound. Jackson skying for that one. Right front court. Cross to Parker. This one low for Jackson. Baseline. Little hook. And a whistle there. Offensive foul. Deion Jackson actually uses his left arm to try to gain that advantage down on the block. That's going to be the third team foul against Bradley. 15, 15 to play. First half. Smiley, a 5'11 sophomore, handling the point guard spot for Illinois State. Antonio Cooper into the game. Hill and Muller. Hill, the only basket so far for Illinois State. Good defense on the perimeter. Smiley for three. It will not go. The ball is loose. And it comes out to Cooper inside the lane. And he will not get it to drop. Back up right. And it's going to roll off. Klein had it. He hits the deck. And the ball is loose. Mark Klein hit the deck hard. That was just great hustle by both teams trying to get it off of Illinois State's offensive board. This is good hustle. Get the ball up on the board. One time, two times, three times. Great hustle to stay after it. 
could not get it to go in the basket. That's just excellent hustle by both teams. Kenny Wright felt like he was in, but it rolled off. Ball goes down to Bradley. Foul charge to Hill. Four team fouls against Illinois State. Billy Wright, the 5'10 senior. Three-year letterman here. The seniors on this Bradley team in their final home game during the regular season. Senior Day always brings a lot of emotion, not only for the students, but for the, for the players as well. Parker's three is not going to go, and Hill is there to claim the rebound. Lamar Smiley. He's going to the bucket, and we have a foul there against Bradley. Going to be charged to Chad Klein. The foul is called on the floor. He was not in the act of shooting. This is an excellent job to turn that corner and get the ball up on the glass. Jamar Smiley is one of the quickest guards in the entire Missouri Valley Conference, and he averages almost seven assists a game. Trotter back in from Muller. Punches returns to the game for Bradley. A little better than 14 minutes to play in the half. Gary Burrell replaces Billy Wright. Burrell at 6-3, a junior out of Chicago, Simeon. Burrell is called by his teammates, the defensive stopper on this team. Well, taken away by Burrell, but a foul against Parker. And they think they're, they're giving the foul to Parker. It should be on Burrell. And Jim Molinari that. is off the bench saying, you've got the wrong guy. I agree with it's that. It's not Parker, it's Burrell. Yep. Parker comes in, you see his hand right there, his left hand, and that's where the foul is called, but they are, well, Burrell is the one who reaches in, but they're giving it to Parker. Now Smiley, here's a jumper by Cooper on the way, not gonna go, Burrell with a rebound. Gary Burrell, Aaron Zobrist. Zobrist, an offensive threat outside. it up it's going to be long and the ball down to smiley see a little emotion was riding on that shot one of that's one of the problems players have they come in so high that they'll shoot the ball either extremely short or extremely long smiley trying to spin his way along the baseline and zobris jumped in to block him and foul him aaron zobris charged with his first personal of the game fouls are mounting up bradley now with 16 fouls jackson and wright to return for bradley Ben Coupet gets set to report into the game. He's going to replace Hawk and Cooley. Boy, Jim Molinari is being very versatile with his lineup. He's already gone nine, ten players deep into his lineup, trying to find the right combination so he can keep this momentum. Out of a smiley, and the ball's knocked away by Billy Wright, who comes into the steal. Excellent defense once again. On court, Zobris. A 10 point spread. Bradley out to a 12 2 lead. Punches just inside the circle. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Three and a three second call. This one coming against the 6 11 junior, Ben Coupet. Coupet was trying to move for position but wasn't able to establish it outside the paint well enough to, to negate that call. Dan Muller back into the game. Illinois State continues to play without Steve Hansel. They've committed six turnovers. Bradley just won. Bradley has been very good in taking care of the basketball most of the year, particularly recently. Sure have the last five games, turning it over less than nine times a game. And you have to do that to be competitive. On the season, they're just under 13 a game. Smiley finds Muller, who puts it off the glass and in. Dan Muller, the second leading scorer for Illinois State. End of the scorebook. Much better job of execution and spacing the floor. Coming up with an easy seam inside for Muller. Billy Wright looking for Jackson Lowe. Dribbles out to the corner. A jumper on the way by Punch is going to be long. And the rebound belongs to Illinois State. Cooper down with the rebound. Smiley. Muller looking inside here. Wright trying to go to the basket. And a whistle on his way. I like this transition style that Illinois State wants to try to run. They want to get the ball up and obviously get into their offensive set, either for the initial break or the secondary break, before Bradley can get back there. 
Dupont charged with the foul. And the bonus situation applies now for Illinois State. Dupont leaves and Chad Klein returns. And that's the line for Illinois State. And the bonus in effect. You mentioned the fouls already. Bradley has had 14 different players foul out of games this season. They're very aggressive on the defensive end, and sometimes they come up with those fouls that forces Jim Molinari to change the lineup. And you're right, could not take advantage of the one-and-one. One. Bradley back in possession of the basketball. There's a turnaround jumper on the way for Deion Jackson on the feed by Wright, and Jackson has a pair. Illinois State back. Trotter trying to go to the baseline. And another turnover. 14 for the score with 11.58 to play in the first half. Bradley leading. What's on the outside of your home says a lot about who lives inside. Whether it's exploring all the color and possibilities of vinyl siding or choosing other carefree exteriors to make a statement, Alcoa gives you all the ways to say it so that you can bring the very best of what's inside, outside. Alcoa Building Products. Picture the possibilities. Did you know a human hair is a hundred times thicker than a transistor on a microprocessor? School kids everywhere are making discoveries like this with the help of a computer education kit from Intel. The kit lets them explore the world of computers, how they work, and think. At Intel, we believe that helping kids understand computers will prepare them for a brighter future. Intel, the computer inside. Big jobs need big muscle, we thought. So we built an engine with the power of 10 cylinders. A V6 should have V8 power, we thought. So we designed a multi-valve V6. A car should be as quick as it looks, we thought. So we built an engine that pounds out 450 horsepower. In fact, we spent so much time thinking about engines, you could almost hear the wheels turning. The new Dodge. Bradley leading by 10, 14-4 with 11.58 to play. More basketball tonight at midnight on ESPN. Brigham Young with a record of 14-10 against Fresno State at 16-8. They battle it out in the WAC Conference. That's 12 midnight Eastern time. It's going to be very important in this game for Bradley to try to utilize their inside strength. They shoot the ball well from the perimeter, but if they can get the ball in the punches as him, also into Deion Jackson, they have a chance to get those percentages up, which will open up that perimeter game 37% behind the arc. Jackson with six points, six of the 14 for the home team Bradley University Braves. Zobris coming off the give, and that will not go. The rebound down to Kenny Wright. Smiley. Muller, right there with him, punches. Along the baseline, right, and he walked with the basketball. Another turnover, that's eight turnovers here. Already charged to Illinois State. Well, Illinois State is not having success in the half court, and that's why it's going to be very important for them to play better defense. Come up with steals, come up with defensive rebounds, Find Jamar Smiley so they can rush the ball up the court and try to score in transition. Zobris now to the game, and Anthony Parker back for Bradley. Right handling the ball, Parker flashes through and will not get it to drop. Maurice Trotter comes away with a rebound. Smiley, sideline right down to the baseline, trying to go around Parker, and a foul coming here against Parker. That's going to take uh, Anthony Parker out of the game with three fouls in this first half with over 10 minutes to go. And but that's, that's why Jim Molinari was so adamant oh, yeah. on the foul they gave to Parker instead of Burrell earlier. Well, this is another transition opportunity. This is what the Redbirds have to have. They have to find Smiley, let him operate one-on-one, -on -one and create some chances either for himself or his teammates. So three fouls with 11-10 left to play in the first half for Parker. He's at the line and hits this one. He's a 70% free throw shooter. There's Parker, the leading scorer for Bradley. And 
Fowler has another shot coming. Smiley came off the bench most of last season behind David Kaysen, and he was uh, an excellent player. He averaged three assists a game, and this year he's leading the conference in Missouri Valley with 6.7 a game. Zobras calls for time against that backcourt pressure. He was double teamed and trapped along the baseline. A 20-second timeout for Bradley to get out of that spot. Well, Bradley has to come back and find out exactly what they need to do to correct the situation. They've missed a couple of shots because Illinois State has come up on them a little bit more. They've now settled down, and now they're playing better defense and trying to get back in this game. And Molinari wants to keep control of this game early. Right now, he does not want Illinois State to get any momentum. It's a 14-6 contest with this 20-second timeout. will do the inbounding in the backcourt. Full-court pressure by Illinois State. Wright handling the ball. Again, Smiley. Knocks it off the punches. Well, out there with him. He's swing the perimeter. There's a jumper on the way by Jackson. Will not go down. And a rebound for Leroy Watkins. It was a good look at the basket that time for Bradley. They could not get inside rebounding position. And another turnover. Illinois State continues to shoot itself in the foot. A pass low intended for Wright, but thrown away. Now Illinois State on the season average is just under 18 turnovers a game, and they have to do a better job of taking care of that ball if they expect to have a chance to win this game. the basketball for Bradley. That's Chad Klein popping out from the high post. Punches. Right, Zobrist, he's a three-point threat, but not find the shot there and off to right. Still plenty of time on the clock. Right puts it up, and it will not drop. The rebound pulled away by Kenny Wright. Smiley inside, a jumper from about 12. Will not go down, and Jackson is up there to clear the board for Bradley. Jackson with that bandage on his head. He received an elbow in the game Wednesday night against Evansville. Still has some stitches above the eye. Fine. And Zobris. Right. There's the shot. Count it for two. Good patience on the offensive end. Continue to set down screens. If you establish the inside, the outside will open up for you. Rotter on the way. And it will not drop. But there's Kenny Wright. Wright. On the rebound, stuffed it through to make it 16-8. Jim Molinari was jumping up and down. He wanted offensive basket interference, but that was a great follow. Line, waiting for Wright, who pops off the circle again. Low, Jackson, and the ball deflected. Kenny Wright deflected it. Into the front court, Smiley, and he misses it. But right there to finish the job is right. He started it on one end and finished it on the other. That was great hustle playing the passing lanes by Jamar Smiley. And a timeout on the court with 8.56 to play of the half. 16-10, Bradley leading. There's no rival against the best and the strongest. For your home, it's Eagle Windows and Doors. In every room, Eagle Ideas bring visions to life. And because you want them to last, your dream shouldn't be left to just anybody. Eagle, giving a vision to great ideas. Eagle offers all you need for great designs, energy-efficient wood windows, or aluminum clad in 46 designer colors, decorative glass, and modern divided lights. See them all today. Chevy Cavalier. Ford Escort, please. LX. GT or LMNOP. It's not easy shopping for a new car unless it's Chevy Cavalier. What about anti-lock brakes? Cavalier has anti-lock brakes plus dual airbag standard. And Cavalier's priced $5.55 less than Ford Escort. Go now. Oh, never mind. I'll get out here. Don't pay elevated prices. Cavalier's just $10,995 at your local Chevrolet dealer. Instead of looking back at Kelly Springfield's long, rich history, we prefer to look ahead. And uh, 
We recommend that you do the same. <laughs> Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. Bradley up by 6, 16-10. A reminder coming up tomorrow on ESPN Sunday Night Boxing at 9 from Arizona Charlie's. It's a 12-rounder, Eric Morales and Rudy Bradley in the NABF Super Bantamweight Championship match. Well, how about some good defense? This is excellent playing the passing lane, coming up with the loose ball. Jamar Smiley's going to push the ball up the floor, but Kenny Wright, once again, following this play, coming up with the putback, he leads Illinois State with over 52 offensive rebounds this season. Joey Wright for Bradley. For Burrell. Coupet has a shot rejected by Leroy Watkins. So Coupet just back into the game has this one batted away. He gives away four inches Watkins in that matchup. Oh, that was just excellent timing to be able to go up and block that shot, and he leads Illinois State with 27 blocks on the season. Great timing. Coupet takes the inbound off the baseline. All right, this is the ball to Burrell. All right. Matchup zone by Illinois State. Someone needs to get to the free throw line for Bradley. Shot clock is down to five. Here's Burrell. Outside the three-point line. Now a shot on the way is going to be short. Did not hit the rim, and the ball will go to Illinois State. Now that's all it takes. It takes a couple of defensive sequences. You come up with a steal. You come up with some defensive rebounds. But you score a basket off of those possessions, and it gives your team some momentum. Illinois State now has momentum on their side. Good for three. Big bucket for the six-foot freshman. What an excellent touch he has from the outside. He has struggled with his outside shot this year, but if you leave him open, he has a great touch when he sets his feet. Duncan Goulet misses a 15-footer. Muller with a rebound. Look who's open on the other end of the court. It's right who lays it up and in. It's a one-point game. Illinois State has come back to make it 16-15. Excellent job by Dan Muller. Once he got the rebound, he looks up court, and nobody's there but his teammate, Kenny Wright. Bradley, after the quick start, finding the lead down to only one. Wright trying to shovel the ball away is foul, stopping the clock with 7.21 to play. Charles the foul. Kyle Cartmill, who just seconds ago hit that big three-pointer. Zobra's flying and punches will return to the game. This is great rebounding on the defensive end. You've got to come up with the possession first. But if you come up with the possession, it gives you a chance to look ahead. You always want to try to find that point guard, but if you don't have that, try to get a layup in transition. Rico Hill returns, giving Kenny Wright a breather, who has played so well. And helping Illinois State to battle its way back. for Bradley. Over, up into the corner. Rogers there with it. Come on. Battle underneath punches. And Watkins, shot will not go. Ryan rebounding, and they reset the shot clock. That's what Bradley has to have more of. Offensive rebounding. They did it with the game started the first three or four minutes. They've gotten away from it because they're going to be a lot more aggressive. Off the right, and we have a whistle that's right. Oh, I thought a walk occurred first. Well, I think we saw Sanchez and Hightower eyeballing each other there to figure out whose call will I don't stand. Think there's no question. Ed Hightower is going to get the seniority on this call. The foul was called before the walk. Six team fouls against Illinois State, so Bradley will go into the bonus next time around. Line right with a jumper for two. It will not go down. The ball is loose, and Muller comes away with it for Illinois State. And swing the ball to the right side, Trotter. Now Hill along the baseline, and we have an offensive foul coming here. Line took the charge. This turns out to be another turnover for Illinois State. Trying to get the ball down on the block. Rico Hill really had nowhere to go on the baseline side. He should have taken an extra dribble and brought the ball back out. 
good defense. Bradley playing without their leading scorer at the moment, Anthony Parker, picking up his third foul with 11-10 left in the first half. They're down to 6-15 to go in the half. Punches to Jackson. Jackson turning in the corner. Illinois State's leading scorer, Murray Strider, has been awfully quiet also. Wright trying to go to the basket, and as he attempts to drive, we have another whistle. charge to Cartmel. Watch the screen coming off the top. There's a couple of good screens being set, but you want to try to get to that basket as quickly as you can, and Billy Wright does an excellent job of turning the corner. Kenny Wright returns to the game, replacing Hill. And at the line, Billy Wright. Billy Wright's a very unusual individual in my mind. He plays about 32 minutes a game, and this guy only takes four shots a game but he's second in the conference in assists at just about five and a half a game and i think he has to become more of an offensive threat if he wants his team to not only succeed today in their final regular season game but if they get a chance to go to the tournament now they return to the game for illinois state and wright converts this one he came in hitting 62 percent from the line a two-point lead for bradley muller Drops it off. Kenny Wright. Now it's Miley. Muller out of the corner for three. It will not go. But Kenny Wright is there. Puts it off the glass. And that will tie the game. So Wright back into the game. And he gets the bucket to tie it. Great athletic ability by Kenny Wright. He's a young man who originally signed for with Miami of Ohio. Went to junior college and made his way here to Illinois State. Elbrus misses the three. Watkins with a rebound. Now it's Kenny Wright inside, and he scores again. <laughs> Wright has almost single-handedly brought Illinois State back, and they have grabbed a two-point lead. He's done just that by his aggressive play and running the floor. He's got great hands around the basket. Jackson with a jumper, and it will go. The game is tied. Deion Jackson. That's his first bucket in a while. Illinois State become so aggressive with their with their defense. All it takes is a couple of ball fakes. Muller baseline. It's not going to go on a whistle. Offense will go the other way again. Charge that one to Muller. Now Gibbons, Rob Gibbons, reports into the game, replacing Leroy Watkins. Gibbons a 6'10 sophomore. Going to be Klein going to the line. So he's taken a couple charges in this game in the first half. You have to give your body up sometime. That's what coaches will tell you. And they want you to stand in there. But Chad's got a bruised knee. And, and it's awfully tough to make that decision. Do I stay? Do I back out? He's going to the line. An excellent free throw shooter, about 88%. And this one will not go for him. Jinxed him already. It's a law of nature. <laughs> Smiling the basketball for the Redbirds. The game tied. Gibbons popping out front. Now Muller looking for the shot. In and out. Trotter back up and in. Maurice Trotter with a pair. Redbirds leading the Braves 21-19. But Trotter needed that basket for his confidence against Tulsa. One for 15 from the field. Here's Jackson starting to move. Off to Billy Wright. Zobris looking for that three-pointer, but can't find it open. Wright starting his way in. Back out front. Zobris is there to save it. That pass to Wright along the right side. They're down to 10 on the shot clock. Wright at the line. On the right side, Klein trying to go baseline. Knocked away from behind. It was Kenny Wright who knocked it away. Trotter, he will jump it. And it will not go down. Rolls the rim and out. And a whistle and a foul coming here. This one, they had Wright and Klein, and Wright will be charged with the foul. Boy, Kenny Wright has been doing everything. See him come up with that stick, tip away at the very end of that play, and keep the ball in the, in the possession of the Redbirds, and all he wants to do is try to make himself active, and he's done a great job out there. He only plays a little over 20 minutes a game, but when he's on the floor, he's made some good things happen. Dobras down, Perel back in for Bradley, and Klein goes to the line. He 
misses the first one. He has another one coming here. Illinois State with 10 team fouls. He must have put a jinx on him. I mean, this guy's only missed a couple of free throws all season. He puts this one in to make it a 21-20 contest with 3.48 left to play in the half. Illinois State leading. Wayne Winfield and Ron Williams were two of the most heavily recruited high school kids in the country. Of course, it wasn't for their game. It was for their minds. And thanks to the Navy College Fund and the Montgomery GI Bill, they have a chance to really use them because they can earn up to $30,000 for college. So, even if the NBA isn't in their future, I guess that's game. A BA is. For more information, call 1-800-USA-NAVY. We gave Dodge Ram the most powerful overall line of truck engines on the planet. A driver's side airbag. The option of four-wheel anti-lock brakes. A cab designed to set the standard for comfort and room. Then, after we made Ram that good, we made it this bad. The Ram Sport. Now get up to 670 in savings or low financing on America's hottest pickup. Rough roads. Sharp curves. To keep a firm grip on roads like this depends upon your shock absorbers. Look, with a worn out shock absorber, the wheel leaves the road. But with a new Monroe Sensatrack shock absorber, your tire holds the road. With Monroe Sensatrack, even the most demanding road feels safer. Monroe Sensatrack, making the road a safer place. Have your shocks checked every 12,000 miles just to be safe. Massachusetts was the shocker, but there may be another upset in the making. Florida State at North Carolina. Jeff McInnes, his pass is picked off. And there goes James Collins of Florida State. He throws it down. FSU up eight. And Aaron Peoria. 21-20. Delta Fawcett halftime report coming up in a few moments. Number one UMass undefeated no more in that Kentucky-Florida contest. Boston at Georgetown. Jimmy Maine will be along to update us on all that action. I don't think there's anything wrong with UMass being 25-1. and one. Here's Gibbons at the line from 15. It will not go down. The rebound for Deion Jackson. Jackson off to Billy Wright. 3.20 to play. Bradley needs to find a shot here. They need to get a good shot. Not necessarily from the perimeter, but get the ball inside. If it's not there, move without the ball. Somebody needs to slice to the basket. Burrell cuts. Hawking Cooley finds him, and it's good. That's what you have to have. If you have good spacing out there, execute your offense, make good hard cuts, you come up with easy looks like that. 22-21. Smiley on the right side. Schroeder away from Morrell to the glass. Not going to go, but a whistle on the way. You going to count it? Nope. Ed Hightower says no. <laughs> and a two-shot foul coming here. Charge to Dwayne Punches. Well, this is this is Maurice Trotter at his best. He's a player who likes to slash. Uses his left hand to put the ball up on the glass and likes to get to that free throw line. This guy is an excellent outside shooter. He's made 105 career three-point shots in his, in his uh, college career. Watkins in. Gibbons out for Illinois State. Klein will return for Bradley. And Maurice Trotter is at the line for two. Trotter 77% for the year. In sync this one, he had 27 points in the victory for Illinois State over Bradley earlier this year in that 77-72 contest. Six foot four. He was in, in high school. He was a center. Did an excellent job of jumping for his team. But out of Lawrence, Kansas, surprised that uh, KU let him get out of there. 23-22, he gives Illinois State a one-point edge. Billy Wright, and Burrell, Klein, Akutule, and Jackson on the floor for Bradley. Jackson. Right. And there's a ball picked away, but Wright gets it right back from Muller. 
out of the corner. A jumper for Wright. Builds it for three. Billy Wright. Eight out of 32 from three-point range this year. Hits a big one there. Bradley was having some problems with that matchup zone by Illinois State, but they found a little penetration and the dish for the open shot. Now Smiley answers with a jumper along the baseline for two to tie it at 25. That's a tough shot by Jamar Smiley. He was actually behind the basket with two defenders on him. Chad Klein, Burrell, the junior. That's Jackson. Backs out, Akinkula, he's gonna take the jumper and hit. Well, Akinkula, the 6'8 sophomore with a pair. 27-25. That was much better spacing by Bradley to be able to find a seam. If you move the ball around the perimeter against the zone, you can come up with those chances. Jackson picks it away to Burrell. Akinkule, and he puts it off the glass and could not finish it. Trotter there to pick it away. Smiley. Watkins. Now Smiley. Back the line and back. Starts to dart in, and he walked with a basketball to travel. So another Illinois State turnover. One of Jamar Smiley's problems when he's got the ball in his hands, he wants to make things happen so fast. We mentioned his assist number is just about seven a game, but he also turns it over about four times a game. Billy Ryan handling the basketball. Bradley only four turnovers. That's about right for the way they've been playing recently. 8-11 for Illinois State. Jackson. Right now, Billy Wright. There's a jumper by Jackson. Good. The Dion Jackson. Jackson hitting to make it a four-point game. He's in double figures. That was an excellent decision by Jackson. He was double teamed down on the block, kept his dribble and dribbled out of the double team, gave it up and moved to the open spot. Illinois State running the final shot of the half. 12 seconds left. Maurice Trotter against Burrell. Now a 15-foot jumper's good. Pound it. They have four seconds left. It's a two-point game here. Wright will heave it from the backcourt. It's on the way and high off the backboard. The first half is over with the score. Bradley, 29, and Illinois State, 27. A two-point game through the first 20 minutes. Let's go to Kenny Bain. All right, thanks guys. Close one out there. Welcome. This is the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, and we have huge news in college basketball. Number one, Massachusetts, for the first time this season, has gone down. Highlights and reaction from that one is coming up. Number two, soon to be number one, Kentucky's playing. We'll have that one too. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the new dot. We're thinking ahead. We're coming back with the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Close one here at halftime. There are a lot of compelling reasons for buying a Dodge Ram, a potent line of Magnum engines, the most available towing of any pickup, payload capacity of up to two and a half tons. But perhaps the weightiest argument is this. Dodge Ram has higher resale than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. The rules have indeed changed. Now get up to 670 in savings or low financing on America's hottest pickup. this in triplicate and have a seat over there. Who's next? 
Hey, welcome. It's the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report here again at the half. If you're going to lose, if you're number one, might as well make it outside the month of March. Number one, Massachusetts did that. They've gone down in February, gone down for the first time this season up against the George Washington Colonials. Here we go. Motto refused to lose, but it would happen. First half, GW, four on two break. J.J. Brady puts it in. It was 16-5 early. Got worse for UMass midway through the first half. John Calipari, he's tossed after two technicals. Didn't like what he was seeing. He would see no more. UMass had some opportunities to stay in it, but Bright misses the dunk there. Then UMass four and two. Bright again misses the lay-in. And then Bright, not so bright. The jam not working. UMass down 17 at the half. Second half, GW putting it away. Shante Rogers to Darren Green. He lays it up and in. The 5 for 3 Rogers was the spark plug all day. And Mike Jarvis and his team takes down number one, Massachusetts. The last time Calipari was ejected was against GW back in the 1988-89 season. That was the year GW won only one game. It came against Massachusetts. Here's the coach, Mike Jarvis. He's all pleased. I hope this will show everybody out there that the Atlantic 10 is a great basketball conference and that there are a lot of good basketball teams in it. And obviously, we not only beat the best team in the conference today, but the best team in the country. And uh, I feel, you know, I feel great for the kids, especially my seniors, Vaughn Jones, Kwame Evans. I really feel great for them. All right, with the Massachusetts loss, number two, Kentucky can move right up. Lon Kruger thinking upset today for Florida. First half, Wildcats come out strong. Anthony Epps, the rip. He goes to Tony Dell. He goes to Walter McCarty. He gets the dunk. Kentucky up 9-4 to four early. Gators hanging tough, though. Greg Williams, he drives. He hits the banker. It goes in. Cuts the lead to 11-8. to eight. More cats, though. It's Mark Pope. He looks for Ron Mercer. He found him. He's down low. He got fouled, too. The Wildcats up 16-10. to 10. Second half, Kentucky out strong. It's Epps to McCarty. That's a bucket. 49-36 at that point. It's now 82-58. This thing almost over. The Wildcats have won 22 straight, make it 23, and make it number one in the nation. Kansas and Kansas State now. First half, Kansas up early. Jock Vaughn to Rafe LaFrentz. He's tall. 9-0. Wildcats answer. It's I'm Omi May with the spin move inside. Cuts the lead to 13-11. Jayhawks right back. Vaughn, the drive, the tough shot goes. Kansas up 24-15. And then P.J. Pugh. He's open down low. He throws it home. 36-29 at the half. K-State has never beaten the Jayhawks in Bramlage Coliseum. 0-12. Looks like it's going to go to 0-13. Texas Tech and Texas. Here comes the Texas Tech Red Raiders getting ready off the bus. First half, Tony Batie going up high and throwing this thing down. Texas Tech up 24-14. Coy Smith, he's in the corner. It's good, 27-14 Texas Tech. Tech keeps the pressure on. Corey Carr breaking loose, goes inside, drew the foul. 36-23 was the score at the half. Texas has won the last eight meetings in Austin. This one now almost over in Texas Tech with an 11-point lead. Want to let you know the Wake Forest and Virginia will be open. That's tonight at 9 Eastern over on ESPN2. Be around for that one. When we come back, more from college basketball from the Big East. Georgetown had to make a big comeback. We'll also check in on Syracuse and John Wallace. Stay with us. This halftime report is presented by Delta Faucet and your dependable Delta plumbing professional. Together, they're the way water is brought to life. When plumbers hit the road, they carry more than a truckload of faucets and pipes. They carry knowledge about products, like why the finishes and solid brass construction of Delta faucets are right for you. They carry knowledge about styles and knowledge about procedures and codes that tell you they're as committed to perfection as we at Delta are. In fact, there's only one thing as dependable as Delta faucets, and that's the plumber who installs them. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Where will you be when your battery decides to die? There's no way of knowing. So if your battery's more than three years old, don't chance it. Maybe this is the time to get to Sears and replace it with the one that's America's most trusted, the Die Hard battery. Before yours dies, get the Die Hard at Sears Auto Center. Clean, clean is my business. So when I'm on the road, Super 8's my motel. Clean carpets, clean seats, clean. 
Clean inside and out. Fight straight at Super 8. This year's Olympics are in Atlanta, but the games will be everywhere. The Bud World Party. A great time to share a bud with friends, no matter where you are. Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 96 Summer Games. 500 to $1,000 cash back on select Kawasaki motorcycles. The Grand Slam rebate after participating Kawasaki dealer until April 30th or while they last. Hey, welcome back here. we got to let you know what's happening over on ESPN2. A whole bunch of basketball, starting with the women, Notre Dame and Connecticut, number three in the nation. And then the men start playing Ball State and Miami. That one's right after the first game. But wait, there's more. There's four games. Wake Forest and Virginia, UTEP, and San Diego State. Again, welcome back. It's the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Go to the Big East now. Georgetown had to make a big, huge comeback against Boston College. There'd be no upset in this one, though. We hit the highlights right now with that one. Jim O'Brien looking for the upset on the road for BC. Eagles tough in the first. Antonio Granger, he drains the three. BC up 34-31 at the half. Second half, more Boston College. Scooney Penn, the rip, goes all the way, beats Iverson to the bucket. BC up 43-35. Hoyas get back in it, though. It's Allen Iverson. He's driving. He dumps it off. Jerome Williams with the hoop. Hoyas up by a single point. Then they pull away. Othella Harrington. Redirects that shot by Penn. Hoyas get it to Iverson. He gets the bucket. Georgetown wins it 67 to 64. They had to stave off the late comeback. Hoyas now 14 1 versus the Eagles at U.S. Air Arena. Granger at 19. Donya Abrams 17 points and 14 rebounds. Big East still here. Pittsburgh and Syracuse. It's three point lead at the halftime. Syracuse has a 30 to 27 lead. More on that one a bit later. Upset in the making here, Florida State against North Carolina. Kurt Luckman inside for Florida State, makes the basket good. Jeff McKinnis, his pass is picked. James Collins going with the other way, throws it home. Just before the half, James Collins playing some more defense. Gets the ball, and he races with it. Throws up the three, drops the shot right at the buzzer. Collins with 18 first half points. Florida State with a two point lead, it's 46 to 44. Wisconsin Green Bay, 23 and two going in. They're up by a single point against Butler. Iowa and Illinois, that game underway, 25-23, still in the first half. Iowa number 18 in the nation. They've won four straight. They've got a two-point lead. More hoops coming up on this very channel. BYU and Fresno State, that's at midnight, nine out west, something like seven in Hawaii. Bradley leading this thing by two at the half. It's the second half of our doubleheader here on ESPN. Stay with us. More of the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report is coming up soon. Never before, never again at Uftring. New 95 Chevy conversion vans. Loaded Astro vans, now $16,995. Loaded full-sized vans, now $17,995. Hey, Gary, Uftring's one stop. stop. No. Price. Drive it on home. Truck stop. stop. Don't you buy no ugly truck. The 75 best pre-owned truck deals with the Automall. Used Ford, Chevys, Dodges, and imports. Sale price from $2,500 to $15,000. Save thousands this week at... Shopping Automall. LaSalle Electronics' biggest home and car stereo speaker sale of 96. Bose, Boston Acoustic, Yamaha, Velodyne, Energy, Orion, JBL, Sirwin Vega, MTX, and more. Yamaha 140-watt speakers, $49 each. MTX subs, $38. 250-watt AAL 15-inch four-way speaker, $159 each. Powered subwoofers starting at $299, now with Velodyne and Energy. Yamaha Center and rear surround speakers, all for $99. LaSalle Electronics' biggest speaker sale of the year going on now. Welcome back to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. So we have more college basketball to tell you about. Let's go to it right now. Instead, we interrupt this basketball scoreboard to bring you golf. Seniors, they're playing golf. They're seniors, but they're active. The American Express Invitational. Isao Ioki, his third shot. Long eagle putt into the clown's mouth. He finished at six under for the day, this being yesterday. Dave Stockton at six under. On the par four, 18th, his approach shot. Inching, inching toward the cup. He buried the hole. Dave Stockton, the first round leader. Take me to your leaders. And now you see new leaders. It's 
Marsh with the lead tied with Stockton and Murphy. You're going to see that right here on ESPN at 6 Eastern. Be around for that. because it knows it has to race me. <laughs> when I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice, I really thought it was gonna be a challenge. I mean, this is a challenge. This is a sure thing. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer, protects better. Old Spice guarantees it. If you don't think it's the best, you call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of your old deodorant. So if you're looking for a real challenge, go climb them out. If you're looking for the best deodorant, try High Endurance from Old Spice. Because now you got proof. Guaranteed. 237 on the ground, gate 15. All right, guys, we've got a 34-minute turnaround on this one. Let's do it. It can be five below zero or coming down in buckets. It doesn't matter. It doesn't buy you another second out here. From the minute that plane touches down to the minute it takes off, we're on. The whole crew. And there's no time to waste. But time isn't everything. Getting the job done right is. Okay, I'm walking up the line. So everybody pulls their weight. Everyone knows the drill. And we realize passengers don't really see this. Have a late bag on your way, back. No problem, Jerry. I'll take care of it. Heck, it's a rare moment when they see us at all. But not a second goes by that we're not looking out for them. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Hey, we told you to bring you college hoop scores. We ain't messing around. Kent leading Eastern Michigan. That's at the half, 46 to 45. Nate Rinking, 21 points at the half. Old Dominion and American. American with the lead there. Tim Fudd, eight points at the half. Couple more scores going on out there. Western Kentucky and South Alabama. It's a seven point game. And Dayton up two against LaSalle. Dwayne Stats, Derek Dickey. They got the second half of our second game. Take it away. I think Kenny. Back in Peoria, Illinois, a two-point game at the half. Derek, 29-27, uh, Bradley leading. Things could be a lot worse for Illinois State if it had not been for Kenny Wright. Well, Dwayne, the biggest problem was Illinois State got down by 10 points early in the game, and Kevin Stallings had to find an answer. He went to the bench. He went to Kenny Wright. Kenny responded very well, playing 15 minutes. He did it on both ends of the floor. He's coming up with four offensive rebounds in that first half. He also scored 10 points but he ran the floor. That's what made the opportunities there for him. Excellent job on both ends. Next, you're gonna see him on a defensive sequence. He can't get the ball, but he swipes it away. Comes up with another possession. But Deion Jackson made a couple of baskets right toward the end of that first half. He had 10 points in the first half. He has to start looking for his offense a little bit more. So Ryan and Jackson each in double figures with 10. The halftime stats, Bradley 43% from the floor. Just 38% for Illinois State. Bradley, the best free throw shooting team in the league, only four of 10. The rebounding department belongs to Illinois State, 23-14, but they've attempted to overcome 11 turnovers, just four for Bradley through the first half. And Illinois State, Derek, all year long, the Redbirds have been a second half team. They certainly have, and, and what they do is they score about 12 more points the second half than they do the first half, but the last 15 games, they're scoring 15 points more in the second half than they do the first. Anthony Parker takes the first shot of the second half and will not get it to go down. Muller on the rebound, and a whistle the other way as Smiley tried to move his way through the lane, and he will be assessed with a foul. Now... Sanchez and Hightower will get together, and that's going to be the call. It's called on Smiley. It sure is out of control, trying to get inside. Smiley does a great job of penetrating. Quick handle, always trying to get inside and create something. 
He leaves his feet, gets caught up in the air with nowhere to go. And it was Klein who took the charge again for Bradley. That's the That's third, third time charge, in this yeah. game. Now the Galore punches with a little jumper. Will not go down and Trotter rebounds. Smiley. Muller out of the corner. Top of the key, Watkins. is one of those players that Jim Molinari needs to be productive. He, he started off his freshman year with a lot of credentials out of Chicago. Rico Hill misses the shot. Here's Parker. It will not go down. Jackson rebounding along the baseline, and it's knocked out of bounds, belonging to Bradley. Well, Parker back in there has missed a couple shots, but boy, did they miss him when he picked up his third foul with a... 11-10 to go in the first half. That was huge, and Parker's going to have to get in the flow, and he's going to have to do it, I think, on the defensive end first. Don't necessarily come down and try to force something on offense. Get it defensively, get it in transition, come up with some rebounds, and maybe even crash the offensive board. Chad Klein sent the inbound along the baseline for Bradley. Bradley leading by two at the half, looking for the first bucket here in the second half. Parker out front. Billy Wright guard again. To Parker on the left side. Parker, because of the foul problem, held to only three first half points. Jackson jumps it and hits it. He has 12. Deion Jackson is stepping up into the leadership role that Bradley is going to have to have him in. Last year he had a subpar year. Muller shot. Not good, but Trotter's there. That will not go down, and it's Deion Jackson with a rebound. Right. Pass intended for punches, but knocked away and intercepted. Now Smiley back. Jim Molinari says, why? Why would you try to throw that ball with a defender standing right there? Well, they're outside the three-point range. Now Smiley. Smiley just inside the circle. With a jumper on the way. And counted for two. Smiley with a pair. 31-29. Bradley leading. Good decision by Jamar Smiley to take that shot. He was right in rhythm, facing the basket. No fancy herky-jerky movement. Catch and shoot. All right, Parker, Klein, Jackson, and punches the five on the floor for Bradley. Illinois State down by a pair. Jackson jumps it again. Counted for a pair. 14 points for Deion Jackson. Well, we talked about last year he struggled a little bit, and that was after his freshman and sophomore year. He was all Missouri Valley Conference. Watkins, Muller down the hill, spinning over Punches, good. Punches all over him, and Hill makes it a two-point game again. The Hill's a wide body, takes up an awful lot of space in there. In the last two games, he's shot the ball very well, over 15 points a game. Here's Parker. Five seconds. in the first game of the year between these two teams with three of 13 with 12 points. It's a big three there to make it 36-31. That was important for Anthony Parker to get his confidence back. Run up and down the floor a couple of times. Get in the flow of the game before you start looking for that offense. Here, let it knocked away by Jackson. Billy Wright comes out of there with a basketball and heavy traffic to the left corner of the key. Now to climb the jumper on the way for three and he fills it. Chad Klein, a 35% shooter from three-point range. The senior drives it home. I like the decision by Billy Wright. He didn't have that initial break. Backs it back up and looks it on the perimeter. Excellent job to find the open man. Jumper by Hill over Klein, and Hill hits another big one for Illinois State. 39-33. The biggest lead of the first half was 10. It was two at the half. I think we're going to have that track meet here in the second half. Both teams are kind of trying to look to score quickly. Right. Right off the top of the circle. Punches. Watching Jim Molinari over here. He just kind of grabbed himself. Why didn't you take that shot, Muller? Or Klein. Right. Now again, and it's picked off by Smiley, who's on his way to the bucket for an easy two. Jamar Smiley converts the turnover into two points. 
And again, it's a four-point contest. Illinois State right back. Smiley plays the passing lanes very well. He has over 30 steals on the season. Goes right. And one. Inside, Parker off the glass and in. Anthony Parker. Nice job on the low block by on the low block by Parker. He takes up a lot of space. He's got long arms. Was able to create that space. And another charge, and it's taken by Klein. Klein taking his fourth charge of the day. The foul charge to Rico Hill. Well, this is how you get through these bruised elbows by getting in the way. Chad Klein does a terrific job of holding his own. 41-35, 14-54 to play. My daughter used to think fish just came from the supermarket. You know, my son used to wait for rainbows, but now we go looking for them. I know they learn all about the world in school, but now we can show it to them. Isn't it amazing how opening one door can open up so many others? Ford Explorer, because the world's too big to be left unexplored. I can't believe this has happened to me. I mean, I, the, the car it's, tires are gone and the battery, the battery is gone. Everybody goes for bad times. And you can see them change if you calm them down, and you explain something to them when maybe they were feeling in a position of powerlessness. Robin, could you call a cab? That's a great feeling. When something happens to somebody else, I want to give them back. Thank you so much. I think that's what this is all about, really. Being in good hands is the only place to be. They can make a rough road feel this smooth. They can make the most demanding road feel safer. And right now, Monroe Sense Attract shocks and struts are on sale. Buy three and get the fourth one free. That's one safe deal. Buy three and get the fourth one free. Only on Monroe Sense Attract, only for a limited time. So go straight to a Monroe Ride Expert Center today or call 1 800 Strut Now. Six-point game with 14.54 to play. Bradley led by two at the half, and they have Anthony Parker back in the second half. Well, having those three fouls in the first half kind of took him out of the flow, but the second half, he has gotten back on track, and the team seems to be following his lead. He makes a three-pointer from the perimeter, and then he's going to post up down on the block, showing you his versatility. Does an excellent job of getting inside scoring, and people were touting him as the next Hersey Hawkins here at Bradley, but... Uh, I don't know if he can pass Hersey. Hersey had over 3,000 points in his career here. Might be the best sense, whether he's as <laughs> prolific in the scoring department as Hawkins. Might be another matter. Might be. All right, Billy Wright handling the basketball for Bradley to Anthony Parker. Jackson. Right starts in. Parker for three. It's not going to go. Funches rebounds. Bradley with another set. Right. Holy, what a defiant Hawkins Kool-Aid underneath and that hard pass through his hands. Well, you almost have to recognize that as a teammate. Billy Wright only takes four shots a game. He's not going to shoot the ball. His first inclination is going to be, look, take the defense and pitch it inside. Bradley up to seven turnovers. Illinois State, 12, and 11 of those coming in the first half. for Illinois State. We have a whistle away from the block and Cooley wound up on the floor. He and Kenny Wright battling over there. Hawking Cooley will be assessed with the personal foul. Aaron Zobris back for Bradley. He will give Billy Wright a breather. Kenneth Klein off the Bradley bench and he's right back into the contest. Replacing Dwayne Punches. I could hear some good minutes out there. Some intangible, good, solid defense, offensive rebounds. Now we've got to see if Chad Klein is able to continue his hot shooting. Muller off balance over Rock and Kula for two. 41-37 with 14 minutes to play. Well, Dan Muller's coming off a terrific season last year at the Missouri Valley Conference freshman of the year. Over 10 points and five rebounds a game last season. Zobris handling the ball. Parker cutting in to the glass. It's not going to go. 
But he drew the foul. What a terrific athlete that Anthony Parker is. Very versatile in that he can come around the screen. He can spot up. He can put it on the floor and slash to the basket. Hang in the air. Excellent rebounder. But also, he's a good guy when he comes to passing the ball with three assists again. The foul on the Illinois State point guard. Sends Parker to the line. Particularly during conference play, the last 10 games averaging over 21 points a game. Just over 19 for the year. And he hits the second shot. 43-37. I'd say Parker has an excellent chance at the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. Very consistent number. Miller, Cartmel, Darts. Off this smiley. the baseline and the jumper's good. Smiley had a lot of arc on that shot. Yes he was, but I like the penetration. Get the ball inside. Illinois State found the, found the color. Dan Muller and he pitches it back out and Smiley's able to go to the glass. Deion Jackson to Zobrist. Across to Klein. Zobrist flashes through. It's rejected by Cartmill who got up there, but Plenty Parker comes up with it. Plenty of time. Jackson had a shot blocked by Hill, but he gets it right back. Off to the corner. Zobris for three. Count it. Aaron Zobris lights it up with a three-pointer. 46-39. Bradley needed that basket so they can keep the momentum they brought out of the locker room. Cartmill off to right, who puts it up, and it will not drop. The rebound to Anthony Parker. 12.30 to play. Klein out front. And Klein takes it inside and lays it up and in. Klein with two. It's 48-39. Now you know and the Redbirds know that Chad Klein is an excellent outside shooter, but they don't expect him to put it on the floor and go all the way to the basket. Rico Hill. Smiley driving off balance and it will not go but a foul in the process. I think it's against Zobris who wound up on the floor. The 6'1 junior charged with the personal foul. What a tough competitor to Mark Smiley is. Whenever something happens to an opponent, he wants to come back right away and make something happen. This guy has already been named to the Missouri Valley Conference most improved team for this 1996 season. Jackson out, right back in. Billy Wright for Bradley. Now Cooper reports into the game, and Smiley will get a breather for Illinois State. Muller inbounding to Hill. Hartmell out front, working against Zobris. Drops it off for Hill along the baseline on the give, and Hill completes the play. Penetration and dish, and if Illinois State's going to stay in this game, they have to get more of that. Bradley's now playing off of energy, overplaying on the defensive end. So you run some back doors, you got a chance for those easy layups. Bradley by seven. Zobras, Klein. Klein looking for Akinkule low against right. Back to Klein. The three pointer on the way will not go this time. Muller rebounding. That's the inside outside play that you want. Get it inside. Let two or three defenders follow the ball and pitch it back out. Cooper swings to Muller. Inside again. Wright reverses and puts it up and in. Kenny Wright with two more. Does he have great hands around the glass? Both ends, offensively, defensively. He's able not only to catch it, but gain his composure underneath the basket. Illinois State will not go away. It's a five-point ball game. Billy Wright inside the circle. Out to Klein. Wright again looking for Akin Kule. Wright got some help there. Back to Billy Wright. Now to Parker. Parker has it knocked by Cartmill as he starts to move in, but a whistle and a foul. 10-39 left to play in this one. How about the inside-outside game? We're going to see Billy Wright penetrate again, take the defense, pitch it back out, try to create an open shot. It's 48-43, Bradley. <laughs>
Can't get any worse than this. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Huh. I stand corrected. Make it a Bud Light. You're never gonna get it open. Time to wash up. Isn't it just like Delta to design a stylish faucet that's practical, too? Give me that. So it's long enough to reach today's double. <laughs> and even triple sinks. <laughs> Delta, the way water is brought to life. Need a towel? <laughs> Ford Escort is a surprising car. Four cars, really. The three-door sport, the four-door sport, the five-door sport, and the wagon. You can pick one, any one, for the same low price of just $12,495, which is great because it includes dual airbags, air conditioning, power steering, power mirrors, and a stereo. And it's the only car in its class that can go up to 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups. Wow, the surprising Ford Escort. Get one with everything, but get it to go. All right, we'll get you back to the Bradley, Illinois State game. First, though, Florida State taking it to North Carolina. Here goes Flott State with the ball. Jeff Brower waiting in the corner. He nails the three, and Florida State leading by a single point. A five-point game, 48-43. Bradley with 10-39 left to play in this one. Tomorrow on ESPN2, an NCAA basketball doubleheader, North Carolina State against Georgia Tech from Alexander Memorial Coliseum in Atlanta at 1 o'clock, followed by Marquette at St. Louis from the Keel Center. A doubleheader Sunday on ESPN2. Bradley with the basketball. Right, inbounding. Floats it out front for Punches. Now to Billy Wright. Parker flashes through inside the top of the circle for a pair. Two more for Anthony Parker. What a nice release Anthony has on his jump shot. Able to come around a screen from the baseline side right in rhythm. To the baseline Muller. He would not get it to go down, but he draws the foul. Stopping the clock with 10 minutes and 15 seconds left to play here. The foul charged to Ben Coupet. The 6'11 junior who had just entered the game for Bradley. Now Trotter and Smiley return for Illinois State, replacing Cooper and Cartmel. And Muller will be at the line. See Dan Muller go to the line, and uh, he's playing some defense against Anthony Parker, and he's having to play that because Steve Hansel is out with a broken foot, and he did an excellent job defending Anthony Parker in the first meeting this season between these teams. Sophomore, 6'4", 189 pounds, out of uh, played at Lincoln uh, Junior College. And this one is good. Not only did he do a great job defensively, but he had seven assists in their first game. So the Redbirds miss Steve Hansel. Yes, they do. A five-point game again. Prepet for the basketball. Punches off the top of the key. Right, Parker <laughs> tries to flash, and <laughs> Trotter grabbed him. Trotter. Hiding behind Kenny Wright saying, who, me? <laughs> well, Trotter actually had his left arm. Look at the, watch the left arm. Right inside, well, we can't see it right there, but he has his left arm around Anthony Parker. He, he knew he was going to try to come out of a screen somewhere, but he wanted to make sure he stayed close enough, at least within arm's distance, so he didn't get too far away from it. Charlie Wright. Anthony Parker. Low for Jackson. Jackson denied the baseline by Muller. Jackson spinning, trying to work his way in the air, and now pass to right back out front. Parker. Jackson almost found himself caught in midair. Parker keeps the ball alive after losing his footing. They're down to four on the short clock, and Punches lets it go. Not going to go. And a foul coming here. Trotter grabbing the rebound and a foul against Parker who is on his back and that is four it comes with 923 left now he'll leave the game trying to keep the ball in bounds Anthony Parker does a good job and he's able to save it and get it back out 
but you're going to see Funches take the shot from the perimeter, but Parker trying to get back on this in on this play over the back, picking up his fourth foul with nine minutes still to go in the game. Dobros and Klein return to the game for the Bradley Braves. Jamar Smiley down to Trotter, and it will drop this time. Trotter, the 6'4 senior, makes it a three-point contest, 50-47. Now, in that first half, the momentum changed when Parker got in foul trouble. He had to leave the game with 11 minutes to go in the first half, and that's when Kenny Wright came in and made some big plays and got Illinois State back in the game. Billy Wright trying to go to the baseline, and it was knocked away off the leg of Kenny Wright, so the ball belongs to Bradley. A kick ball, they'll re reset the shot clock. Zobris out front, out flying. Crunches, right looking for the basketball. Zobris flashes, partially blocked there on that 15-footer. Back the other way in a three-point game. Jamar Smiley pushes to the right side. Muller, now Smiley and Hill off the top of the circle. Right, battling line low. They reverse. Now the jumper, Smiley. It's not going to go, but Muller is there. And here we are, a one-point game. 50-49 with 8.15 to play. Anthony Parker goes out of the game. Things start happening for Illinois State. Dan Muller makes the tip. Somebody was grabbing his shirt as he was tipping the ball in with his left hand. Billy Wright, not to Klein. Here's a three on the way. Good. Oh, a big bucket there by Chad Klein. That's a huge bucket for Bradley to try to get some momentum back in their corner and keep this thing going. They want the crowd to stay on their feet. 53-49. A full house here in Peoria at the Carver Center. Baseline jumper is not going to go. That ball in play and out of bounds. It's going to belong to Illinois State. Now Carrie Burrell returns to the game for the Braves, replacing Aaron Zobras. 7.36 to play. Timeout on the floor. 53-49 Bradley. Ford Explorer. Wow. How high up are we? About 2200 over Chevy Blazer. Chevy Blazer LT comes with a lot of standard features you can't get on Explorer, like a driver control system, more power, and daytime running lights. Yet Blazer's priced $2279 less. <laughs> can't get much higher than this. <laughs> well, you could. Ooh. Don't pay elevated prices. Chevy Blazer's got everything you want for less at your local Chevrolet dealer. This is my photo album. Oh, there's some memories in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Real dairy cheese. That's <laughs> Choice meats. Oh, boy. Limpy founder Tony Kanza. Mm. A man who loves his subs. Oh, my mom. Limpy, it's a beautiful thing. Try our new steak and cheese sub. Mmm, it's a beautiful thing. At Sports Center, we have a serious obligation to give our audience the sports that they want to see. We agonize over those decisions every day. And I gotta tell you, your sport, the 1990s in America, it's just not there. There aren't enough people watching it. I'm sorry, fellas. Maybe next year. Next! Bradley leading Illinois State 53-49. The Redbirds have been down by as many as 10 in this game, but that's nothing new for them. No, it isn't because they've been down by 10 or more points on seven occasions and come back to win those games. So they feel they are within striking distance, especially this close to home with some of their fans here in this arena. They have a chance to get back in this game, especially with Anthony Parker out of the game in foul trouble. Seven of their 19 wins have been those big comeback wins. Bradley jumped out to a 12-2 lead to open this game. Led by two at the half, and it's a four-point contest at the moment. Illinois State with a basketball. Jamar Smiley out there. Maurice Trotter in the game. He has eight points to this point. That's Muller. Bradley going to a 1-3-1 one one zone. And a three out of the corner. Not going to go. Billy Wright down with the ball. 
ahead to Burrell. Burrell returns to right. Again, Parker out of the game with four personal fouls. Here's Billy Wright. And he returns it right back to right. Jackson. They go low. Offense. And an offensive foul against Dwayne Punches. Coming up at midnight, Brigham Young at Fresno State. Brigham Young 14-10, Fresno State 16 today as they battle it in the WAC Conference tonight on ESPN. Mark is back. Making some noise out there in the WAC. We'll see him tonight at the Bewitching Hour, Eastern Time. Hill with Wright working the ball. Muller. Smiley, we have 6.33 to play in the game. Mark Smiley has to make some good decisions here. Hill will not get his shot to go down, but Muller, Muller comes back with a pair, and it's a two-point game, 53-51. What a great job by Dan Muller to be able to come up with that offensive rebound. Deion Jackson working for Bradley. Punches low. Burrell finds Wright. Billy Wright puts it up and in. That's a three. Another three for Billy Wright and a big one. He doesn't score often, but he has a couple big buckets for Bradley this afternoon. Well, Billy's going to have to look to shoot because the defense is dropping completely off him, smothering the inside. So if Bradley is going to keep their gate, their momentum and try to gain on Illinois State, he has to look to score. Now Trotter back with three. Trotter averaging 15 points a game. Moves into double figures. Trotter's a player, another player who wants to try to get some points on the board. Only had six in that first half, but against Drake, he didn't score in the first half. Had 25 points in the second half of that game. Here's right. Jackson, They're down to a little better than five minutes to play. Anthony Parker getting sent to report back into the game for Bradley. And this one they could not finish as Jackson could not get the ball to go home for him. But it's out of bounds, belonging to Bradley. That gives Parker a chance to return to the game. Replacing Kerry Burrell. This was a timing play that Billy Wright wanted to make eye contact with Deion Jackson and try to find him on a back screen. And you have to be able to throw the ball up toward the square. And if you have somebody with good hands and great timing, they can make that play. And quiet off the inbound to Parker. Here's a flash. Right inside. Back to Klein. Bunches starts to take it in. It's knocked away. And Wright is whistled for the foul. This one against Kenny Wright, the 6'5 senior. Each team 13-3 in the Missouri Valley Conference. Bradley playing on its home court. The Bradley Braves, 18-6 overall. They've won 10 of their last 11. They had a disappointing loss in that stretch to Wichita State. Terrific home team. They've won a, their 11 and 1 at home, and over the last three and a half seasons, they are 42 and 3 here at the Carver Center. Bunches converts the first one back into the game. Gary Burrell. He'll replace Deion Jackson. And Bunches has another one. Just converts both. Down to 4.45 to play in a four-point game. And the question has to be, how long does Jim Molinari leave Anthony Parker out of the game? He needs that scoring back in there. It's a two-pointer. 58-56. Anthony Parker's on the floor. It's my fault. I didn't see the substitution. Inside Burrell. Now Klein. Really right. Open for an instant. Burrell darts in. Bunch is there to take the pass. Back to Burrell. He'll put it up. It'll be a little too hard. And Hill, Rico Hill with a big rebound. Smiley. 
And a man in the air. Now to right. Off to Muller. Low. Hill. It will not go. Burrell rebounding, and he's fouled by Maurice Trotter. We're down to 3.56 left. A two-point game. Leon Jackson wants to report back into the game for Bradley. Now, if you're Jim Molinari, you know that Illinois State is going to crash the board. You're going to tell all five of your guys to go to the defensive glass. Come up with this possession. If we have a break, we take it. If not, start to utilize the clock, guys. Get good shots. The foul on Trotter, number three. And Kerry Burrell will go to the line. Bradley in the bonus. Burrell hits this one. 66% on the year. At number 25 for Burrell in memory of Ben Wilson. Out of Chicago, Simeon. And this one will not go. Hill rebounding. It's a three-point game. Smiley into Muller. Here's Wright. Jimmy Wright had a great first half to pull Illinois State back. Trotter, now he'll shoot it. It's a three, not going to go. And there to pull down the rebound. A big one, the point guard, Billy Wright. Now Parker, and here's a travel. A travel, charge to Funches, and the ball goes the other way. With three minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the game, we have a timeout, 59-56, Bradley. Hey, Wilkins, the car rental place is this way. Why, Stevens, I'm shocked. Where's your sense of fiscal responsibility? Reservation for Wilkins. At Dollar Rent-A-Car, our airport locations make it easy to come and go. Good revenues generated last quarter. See you on the plane. Are you kidding? I got a whole round of meetings tomorrow. And our low rates make it even easier to stay. Hey, great meeting so far. Dollar Rent-A-Car. Dollar makes sense. You can look at other people's landscapes, or you can find your own. Sometimes where the pavement ends is where the world begins. We only went to four-star restaurants until we found one with four billion stars. Isn't it amazing how opening one door can open up so many others? Ford Explorer, because the world's too big to be left unexplored. weather update. A little breezy today, so wear a light jacket. Next time, check the Weather Channel. Our severe weather watch tracks storms with the most advanced satellite technology available. The Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. Taking your act on the road? With Connect First from Northwest Airlines, you get treated like a king for the price of coach. You pay a coach. You sit in first class only on Northwest, baby. <laughs> Bradley holding a three-point lead with 3.30 to play from Peoria, Illinois. On our dollar storyline, Illinois State, 12 turnovers, but 11 of those came in the first half. Ryan and Muller each with 12. Bradley, 7-1 at home in the conference. Overall, 11-1. Deion Jackson leading the charge with 14 points. He was a major factor in the first half. State doing a much better job. Jamar Smiley not trying to force the action quite as much, making better decisions. Only one turnover here in the second half has enabled them to stay within three points. Watkins back in a game replacing Hill. The ball loose inside. We have Watkins and Parker battling for the loose ball. Three minutes, nine seconds to play. And on the exchange, Illinois State will hang on to possession of the basketball. Kevin Stallings watching his team battle back all day. They got down big early and it's been an uphill struggle. But they have not quit. Smiley working against Jackson. And a travel here. He turned it over. 
Well, they've cut down the turnovers in the second half, but that could be a big one. That could be. Jamar Smiley, just a sophomore, and he always wants to try to make that extra little bit happen. He's out of West Hempstead, New York, and he's got a little bit of showmanship in his body. Illinois State averaging close to 18 turnovers a game. 14 in this game today. Three minutes left to play as Billy Wright dribbles into the front court. He reverses, finds Parker, and Parker throws it into the hands of Jamar Smiley. Smiley quickly down court, over four, good! Smiley against four white shirts put it up and in. Much better decision by Smiley because the defense was backpedaling. They were back on their heels. Jamar knew when he could pull up. Pulled up really uncontested for that easy shot. A one-point game. Low for Parker. Parker punches loose back to Parker. Not going to go. Klein in trying to grab it. And we have a jump ball again. And this time it will belong to Bradley. Punches and Watkins came out of there battling for possession of the basketball. Chad Klein actually came in on the back end of this play. Take a look, trying to get the ball inside for a score. Anthony Parker finds nothing there, but when he takes it up, it is tipped that time by Kenny Wright. But coming in the back end, nice hands by Chad Klein to be able to tie that ball up. Now Billy Wright along the baseline to inbound. Punches. Klein pops out. Oh, what a pass, but it's broken up. Picked up by Jackson. Now Klein. And right out front. They're down to seven on the shot clock. Right from the line with four on the clock. Misses the shot. Crowder rebounds. 59-58 Bradley. Illinois State with the ball. Two minutes, three seconds to play. Smiley wants to drop it off and we have a whistle. Calling a charge. And Klein was back in there. No. Let's see if it's going to be on Klein or is it going to be against Smiley? Well, I it's think it's going to be against yeah, Klein. Against Klein. Klein did a, does a great job. They're actually calling a block on him on this play. It looked like he might have had good position, but Jamar Smiley using his body to change direction in the air and draw that foul. Illinois State will have the ball, and Maurice Trotter will inbound. Jim Molinari and Kevin Stallings battling this one on the sidelines. Watkins puts it up and in. And Illinois State takes the lead at 60-59 with a minute 55 to play on the bucket by Watkins. And now timeout. Billy Wright into the front court asking for time with a minute and 51 seconds left to play in this game. Illinois State has grabbed the lead 60-59. to They finally got over the hump. No one can save you now. Hey, bet we could. Fools, we will defeat you and take your Miller Lite. Not if we choose the weapon. Paper football, very clever. You kick off. Yeah, it's good. We are safe. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. You are worthy opponents. Let us celebrate. I know a good sports bar around the corner. Life is good. <laughs> When plumbers hit the road, they carry more than a truckload of faucets and pipes. They carry knowledge about products, like why the finishes and solid brass construction of Delta faucets are right for you. They carry knowledge about styles and knowledge about procedures and codes that tell you they're as committed to perfection as we at Delta are. In fact, there's only one thing as dependable as Delta faucets, and that's the plumber who installs them. Delta, the way water is brought to life. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Red Dog Beer. Bold, smooth, unusually easy to drink. You are your own dog. By Dollar Rent-A-Car, where low rates are just one of the reasons Dollar makes sense. Carver Center is full. We have a one-point game with a minute 51 to play, 60-59. Illinois State grabbing the lead. ESPN Radio on the NBA Game of the Week coming up tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern from the United Center in Chicago. The Orlando Magic and the Chicago Bulls square off. One of the Bulls looking for the most wins ever in a season. 
They're pretty close to doing it. That was a tough game they lost to the Miami Heat last night. Miami dressing only eight players. Anthony Parker in the game. He picked up his fourth foul with 9.23 left to play and was out for about four and a half minutes. Everybody back in here in the closing minutes of this one. 151 left to play. This for the Missouri Valley Conference lead. Each team 13 and 3 in the conference. Billy Wright into the front court. Off the top of the key. Jim Molinari wants his team to run that play sharply so that someone's able to come around. A down screen for an easy look at the basket. Parker pops out. They're at seven on the shot clock. Anthony Parker against Trotter. And an off-balance jumper. Good. What a shot by Parker. 61-60. Bradley with a minute 15 to play. That's what you want your money man to do. That's what your leading score is supposed to provide. Big plays. Big shots at the right time. Muller, now Maurice Trotter. Trotter stops at the baseline. Back to Smiley. Smiley takes it in and puts it up. It's going to go. What a shot over Jackson by Jamar Smiley. 62-61, Illinois State. Man, you got to love Jamar Smiley. Not only does he make some good things happen, he makes bad things happen. He just makes things happen when he's got the ball in his hand. 45 seconds to play. 20 on the shot clock. Parker now punches to the basket for the count. They're calling an offensive foul. And count the bucket. He's going to count the bucket to make it 63-62 with 38.1 seconds left on the clock. And we'll go to the other end for a one-and-one. One. That's a huge play. This was an excellent cut by, Jim, by Dwayne Funches to be able to catch the ball. He's moving without the ball, going down the lane, taking it up to the basket. But Dan Muller standing underneath the basket and draws that charge. So Muller will be going to the line, an 80% free throw shooter for Illinois State. 63-62. Bradley leading. Now Jim Molinari thinks that somebody else should yeah. be at the line. It's, 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 and Kevin Stallings is saying, no, no, no. We've got the right guy at the line. It was the right guy. So it's going to be Muller. He's their leading free throw shooter. And he misses. Short armed it. And to pick it up is Jackson. Now right. And the foul here charged to Smiley. Billy Wright with a basketball. 29.5 seconds left to go in this game. That is a good foul because Billy Wright only shoots 61% from the free throw line. However, you have a senior on senior day. You know he's going to make both these free throws. This is the fourth foul on Jamar Smiley. So Wright will be at the line. It's a one and one. 62% on the year, and this one is no good. The ball loose inside, and we have a whistle. And a foul. I think it's going to be against Trotter, and it'll send right to the line again. On Kenny nope. Wright. Charge it to Kenny Wright. Yeah. So Wright will be charged with the foul. And Billy Wright will go back to the line with another chance. This time with 27 seconds left. Well, I know we got to get it in sometime, but we got the right one maybe at the free throw line this time. And he puts this one up and in. Another chance, and he makes it a two-point contest, 64-62. You give a senior enough time, he's going to make that big play for you. And this one is good. It's a three-point game. Molinari wants to make a change and get Burrell into the game. Illinois State wanting a timeout. 27 seconds to play. Bradley has taken a three-point lead. 65-62. They'll talk it over. Don't go away. Back in a moment. The name's Thursday. I was working the day watch when the call came in. Nina Springs Water Patrol. See Shirley at the factory. Are you Shirley? 
You got a problem with that? No, ma'am. Uh, sir, our water tastes flat. Here, try Nina Springs. It's cool, crisp, clear water bottled from Artesian Springs. Tastes great. Set us up. All right. Thanks, Shirley. Don't call me Shirley. For the best water in America, call Nina Springs at 1-800-5-WATER-7. Tell them Thursday sent you. All right, delivery's okay. Hi. Hold this. Bring it in, guys. What's going on? I'm moving day. You know, Marge, the kids, and I don't live in the famous nine-county area of SEPQ land. <laughs> you do. So we're moving in, and we can join SEPQ like you. You mean I can join SEPQ? We'll have free checking, low-cost loans, all sorts of great stuff SEPQ has. Oh, I can join SEPQ. In Seculand, you have the freedom to join. Hi, hold this. Because after our doubleheader is completed, we'll have some of the NFL's greatest moments. Nice guys finish first. Merlin Olson, swell guy. Now back to our basketball game. 65, 62, 27 seconds left to play. Here we are in Bradley at the Carver Center. Derek Dickey, Dwayne Stats, Illinois State with two full timeouts left, a 20. Bradley one and one in the timeout department. Nine fouls against Illinois State. So the next one moves them into 10 and two shots. Illinois State with the possession arrow in its favor. Second half has pretty much followed the first half in that Bradley led most of the first half, took a two-point lead into the locker room. The second half again, they've led pretty much the entire second half, but Illinois State has found a way to fight, crawl, and scratch their way back to make this a three-point game with only 20 seconds, 27 seconds to go. Bradley with five seniors on their team. Jim Molinari said this is a culmination of five years of work for him in his fifth year trying to win the Mississippi, or the Missouri Valley Conference here. They're 25 seconds away. Smiley puts it up. It will not go. And a foul coming against Bradley. This one will be against Klein. Stopping the clock with 18.7 seconds left. Take a look at the drive. You can almost feel Jamar Smiley wants to make it happen. He puts the ball up too hard on the glass. But he was able to draw that foul. And Smiley will go to the line. Zobrist into the game. Replacing Burrell. Deion Jackson comes back. He's going to replace Punches. And now Kenneth Pearson enters the game for Illinois State. And Trotter will depart. Just under 19 seconds to play in the game. They send Jamar Smiley, a 70% shooter, at the line for two. And he sinks this one. So it's a two-point game. The Missouri Valley Conference lead on the line in the closing seconds of this game from the Carver Arena. This one is good, and timeout call. So Illinois State uses a timeout. It's a one-point game, 65-64. Smiley hitting two to give him 16 on the day. Well, Kevin Stallings has to try to decide, what am I going to do? There's only 18.7 seconds to go. You're down one. You obviously have to foul, but you go for the steal first. You want to try to get a deflection, come up with that possession. If you don't, there's a couple of players out there on the floor you want to try to foul. I think Parker is one you want to stay away from. Anybody else out there on the floor, you want to try to get to him quickly. Also, Chad Klein is an 82% free throw shooter. And they have Jackson in, who's a 79% shooter. So, Jim Molinari loading up that lineup with some good foul shooters. The object, though, is to get the steal or get the possession. If you can't, stop the clock. You have to foul someone quickly. Klein will do the inbounding. Pearson on him at 6'8". Klein looking. Inside. They get it to Parker and across the timeline to Zobris. Zobris. Out front, now to right, across the court to Klein. Illinois State chasing. Back into the corner, Klein. They can't get him! Zobris, now to right. They're down to a couple seconds, and Wright is charged with the foul. Kenny Wright charged him. Kenny Wright assessed with the foul. Jim Molinari maybe wanting an intentional foul here. 
But he's going to get a one and one out of this with 1.1 second left on the clock. It's amazing. Jim Molinari got exactly what he wanted. He wanted to use the clock. He wanted to get the ball in bounds, get it up court. He was able to use 16 and a half seconds before a foul was committed. Excellent passing. Good spacing in the front court by the Bradley Braves. Well, you've got to give Jim Molinari and Bradley a lot of credit for being able to execute exactly what they wanted to do. Well, you always want to try to put your best free throw shooters out there because you know the fouls are going to come. But if you're able to get the ball in bound, break that initial press, get the ball up court, space the floor out, he put the right combination out there to get two jobs done and also keep the possession and go to the free throw line. Well, they used all the clock with the exception of 1.1 seconds left to go. Bradley looking for its 19th win, but more importantly inside the conference, their 14th win with a game left in conference play. But Wayne, there's always a gamble a coach can take. You know, Molinari can have his player. He can certainly have uh, Billy Wright go to the line and miss the free throw because there's only one second on the clock. But you don't teach players to miss. You teach them to always try to make that basket. Reminder that BYU and Fresno State is coming up tonight on ESPN. That'll be at midnight in WAC conference play. That game from Fresno. Brigham Young, 14 and 10. Fresno State, 16 and 8, 10 and 4 in the conference. That's at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern time. Tip off BYU and Fresno State. In Peoria, just a pad over the second left. And it's the senior guard, 5'10", Billy Wright, back to the line for Bradley. He'll get two shots anyway because they're up to 10 team fouls. He makes the first. It's, it could turn out to be a different deflection here. And this one would not drop for him. Another one coming. Make the free throw. That's the bottom line. It is. He it tried will to not it. go. He missed it. Illinois State got a quick timeout with .3 seconds left on the clock. Should be more time than that. And that's what Kevin Stallings wants to discuss with the officials. Ed Hightower over. He's saying there's no way that they could use eight tenths of a second. Time is correct. But it's going to be .3 seconds left on the clock. In this one-point game, 65-64. They, wow. they only have time for a tip. Coming up following our game, the NFL's greatest moments. You can see the clock expired with the exception of .3 seconds left. It was a two-point game at the half. You knew when it started Bradley 12 and Illinois State 2, that wasn't going to last very long. No, not at all. And these teams have gone back and forth throughout the entire second half, making it a very, very competitive game. Now, I'm Jim Molinari. I'm going to put somebody on the ball. Some coaches, they don't guard the ball out of bounds, but I want to make it as difficult as possible for that passer to try to get the ball in bounds. I may even put the tallest player I have on the floor, even if he has been in the game, just to try to make it a little more difficult. They said the pressure was on Bradley playing here at home, trying to come up with another win on their way to the conference championship inside the regular season. They said Illinois State in here with really nothing to lose and everything to gain. This game has been pressure packed right down to the final second. Both these teams, as we mentioned earlier, still have one game remaining. Illinois State, their next game is at Indiana State. Indiana State's only 9 and 16 on the season. And Bradley, they have to go to Southern Illinois. And Southern Illinois is uh, 4 and 12 in the Missouri Valley Conference, and they've lost their last three games in a row. But down there, never an easy assignment. Never easy going down there. Burrell on the ball. Muller to do the inbounding. Everybody deep. Here's the pass down court, and it's picked off. This game is over. Bunches stepped in front. The game is over, and Bradley defeats Illinois State 65-64. The NFL's greatest moments coming up next 
A jubilant crowd here in Peoria for Derek Dickey and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dwayne Stats saying so long from Peoria. I'm Steve Sable. Most people will tell you that in the NFL, winning is the bottom line. But there's a fine line between merely winning and being a winner. You see, the notion that winning isn't everything, it's the only thing, well, that's a nice way to turn a phrase, but it's no way to earn praise. The men whose memories truly last are also the men who prove that nice guys finish first. I'll be back with their story right after this. 500 to a thousand dollars cash back on select Kawasaki motorcycles. The Grand Slam rebate after participating Kawasaki dealer until April 30th or while they last. Things are changing, like the way we call collect. Now instead of zero, millions of people are dialing 1-800-COLLECT to save on collect calls. Millions of people saving millions of dollars. Hey. Change is a good thing. Anytime, any phone, anywhere. 1 800 Collect. It's the way we call Collect today. They can make a rough road feel this smooth. They can make the most demanding road feel safer. And right now, Monroe Sense Attract shocks and struts are on sale. Buy three and get the fourth one free. That's one safe deal. Buy three and get the fourth one free. Only on Monroe Sense Attract. Only for a limited time. So go straight to a Monroe Ride Expert Center today. Or call 1-800-STRUT-NOW. Investment advice. Everybody wants the inside scoop. But chasing every tip will drive you crazy. And it won't make you rich. A consistent investment program will get you somewhere. Fine. You know, a couple of times I said, man, let me have this turkey. You know, a guy be holding him or biting him or doing some crazy tactic, and Merlin won't retaliate that way. He'll try to humiliate the guy through beating him to the quarterback or making a tackle, and I, I respect him for that. There are things that I will do, things I won't do. I won't take a cheap shot. There is a level of satisfaction that you reach without having to put a violent shot on the quarterback. People say you have to hate to play football. I don't think that's true. And football is a game, and I think you have to play it as a game. And if you make more of it than that, I think you're making a mistake. Olsen became the cornerstone of the first of pro football's big-name defensive lines, the fearsome foursome. And number 74 attracted blockers like a magnet. By tying up two or three of them at a time, he gave someone else a better chance to get to the ball carrier. It was a clear sacrifice of personal glory. Ole was a guy that held it together because Ole was there to take up the slack. Ole could always cover inside and had that good, savvy part of his makeup that allowed those other people to do a lot of things that normally you don't do. It was just like a right arm. I mean, it was just like, just like a 50-year-old wife. You know, when he wasn't in there, I mean, you knew the difference. You knew the difference because there were so many things that, that allowed me to rush the passer. And if we wanted to gamble, run a stunt in a crazy situation, see, me and Mullen would run stunts inside the 10-yard line. Well, not very many defensive combinations would do that. But then again, we are the only defensive combination in the Hall of Fame, too. <laughs> Merlin Olson made the transition to life after football with the same approach that got him to the Hall of Fame. 
I don't think there's any rule that says because you played football, you can't go from that to being a, a doctor, if you want, or an actor, or a broadcaster. On the Jets today, the Jets had hoped to establish that running game, get McNeil upfield, and then use the running game to throw some play-action passes. They've had trouble all year throwing the ball when they... At the same time, I don't think that playing football means you're going to be good at those things. You've got to apply the same kind of energy, the same kind of enthusiasm, same kind of preparation. If you're willing to do that, then very often you can use this tremendous competitive machinery that you've developed as an athlete to help you to reach the top of whatever it is that you want to do. From the football field to the sound stage, Merlin Olson, a gentle giant who always carried a big stick, but never used it. Don't miss the only spring home show at the Peoria Civic Center next weekend. See over 100 exhibitors. Take in one of the many free seminars. Check out the colorful spring garden display. Just by coming to the show, one lucky couple will win a seven-day trip for two to Hawaii, plus $1,000 spending money, courtesy of Nika IBEW, the Quality Connection. Sponsored in part by WXCLFM and TCI Cable Vision. Don't miss the only spring home show at the Peoria Civic Center, presented by the Home Builders Association of Greater Peoria and R&B Productions next weekend. San Francisco music scene bridges the gap between generations. From John Lee Hooker, Jefferson Airplane, and Santana, to the ageless tunes of Tony Bennett. Head to the Warfield to catch Chris Isaac, or check out Rancid Green Day or Counting Crows at the Kennel Club. Where else can you go for a real San Francisco treat? Best Buy, where thousands of CDs are under $10. Get Jim Blossom's new release, Congratulations, I'm Sorry, now at Best Buy. Some places are known for great music. Because if he did, they're going to have to forfeit the championship. You've got the documentation. I need it tonight. This is a lead story. I know Tyson is fighting where, and I know Tyson is fighting when, but I need to know who that next opponent is going to be. And we're looking at the series. Oh, guys, guys, what do you like better, hurt me or spank me? Spank me. Spank me. Perfect. Okay. But listen, we're this is the extremely important. If you can get it to me tonight, get I can I get this it. on tonight. Deep in the heart of Texas, there was once a professional football coach, not a master tactician, not a play-calling wizard, but a man who loved people and the game that brought him so much joy. Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back! And although this fun-loving cowboy tended to grow a bit excited at times, he also was a competitor who was quite serious about his work. Hey, can I tell you one thing? That's three holding penalties on one football team and a quarter and a half. That ain't funny. O.A. Bum Phillips spent 13 years coaching high school football and six at the collegiate level. Finally, in 1975, he took over the lowly Houston Oilers. And over a six-year span, he became the winningest coach in club history. Because we're the But Bum won't be remembered for the wins and losses so much as for his ability to bring a team and an entire city together as a family. He was very big on camaraderie. He, uh, the biggest thing to Bum is, uh, as far as the team is concerned, is not necessarily how well you played together, but how well you lived together and how well you got along together. He wanted to develop more than a player. He wants to develop people. Uh, I always tried to make our football team a family because I always felt like that you might fight with your brother or your sister and be really mad at them, but, but if somebody else jumped on them, you're going you're gonna to take up for them. Well, that's kind of the way that I wanted our football team to be, like a family. Saturday practices with the whole family involved and team pizza parties were all a part of Bum's belief in unity. And when the football father figure left Houston and took over the New Orleans Saints in 81, he once again was able to bring about a togetherness rarely seen in professional sports. By caring so much for his players as people first and football players second, Bum was able to instill a desire to compete in his men another coach might not have achieved. Bum was really into the, the, the person and not the player. And I think all the guys felt that 
and I think that was a motiv motivating factor of, uh, of the guys around him that made him want to go and play and play hard for him because they said, this guy cares a lot about me, not only as an athlete, but he cares a lot about me as a person, so I need to go out here and do what I can to help him win. He just arranged it so the best would automatically come out of each one of his athletes. You know what we got to do? We got to go out there and every man got to do his job. Every man got to pull together and every man got to be able to overcome adversity. Don't care what it is. Don't care what happens. We've done it all year long. We hadn't let go of that rope. And we're not going to start right now. Let's go get this. One thing I want you to remember. Football is only a small part of your life. It ain't, live, it ain't life or death out there. All we got to do is go out and do the same thing we've asked from the first day we started. Do everything as good as you can and then a little bit more. That's all the hell you got to do. Well, I really feel like that, a, that if you can get a guy to do something better than he's capable of doing it, then that's what you need to have if you're going to be a successful head coach. Not just good as he can do it. Yeah. Anybody can do that. you got to be able to make him do it a little bit better than he's capable of doing. And if you've got good rapport with him, you've you got a good chance of getting that. Uh, I just believe that, that a person has to, a, f a head football coach has got to make his average players good and his good players great. If he can't do those two things, then he's not going to be a successful head coach. And part of that ability to do that is based on your rapport with him. Despite his closeness to his players, Bum never reached the Super Bowl, losing AFC Championship games to Pittsburgh in 78 and 79. Perhaps it was his closeness that prevented him from ever taking that final step. I think it can be a little bit of a problem. Uh, you, might, uh, you might start to accept the feet a little bit too easy. I don't know if Bum ever had the, 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 the talent that it, uh, that it takes to really get over the edge of, uh, of getting into the Super Bowl. He came real, real close in, uh, in Houston. But I don't really think that he ever had the, the, the exact uh, players and talent that he needed to go. Bum nearly led the New Orleans Saints to the playoffs in 1983, but a Week 16 loss to the Rams ended the season. The loss must have been painful for Phillips, but strangely enough, it also hurt an opponent, as former player Mike Barber showed unusual compassion. Michael, gotta love you, man. That's a tough one. <laughs> you deserved it. Well, yeah, you know, that's the way it is. You've done a miracle work here, and I know it's just beginning for you. Thanks, Mike. Okay. I appreciate it. Good luck to y'all. Play okay. out. Bum never would reach the playoffs again as he retired from football in 85. But he's still coaching, in a sense, today on his ranch in Texas. And it's no surprise he enjoys that game also. He, he loves life, he, no matter what he's doing. And he's always a person that's doing something seven days a week. Even when he was coaching, he wasn't at home. He's got, he just loves people. Them's one of a kind. And them love every day of whatever he's doing, but he loved every day he was in it. This is a happy guy. It might seem strange that a man who devoted so much of his life to people and to football would be able to walk away from it completely. But the transition has been easier than one might expect. It hadn't been hard at all, really, because I got out of football because I wanted to. It might have been more difficult had they have said, look, you can't coach anymore, but it wasn't that way. I told them, look, I don't want to coach anymore. And evidently I made the right decision because for 37 years, uh, there's nothing in my life except football. And yet the day I walked away from it, it hadn't been in my life a day since then. I have not even thought of football. So if I'd have missed it, then I'd have made the wrong decision. But I have not missed it one bit. Bum Phillips may not miss football, but the game and those associated with it surely miss him. He was much more than a coach. He was a teacher. And although his lessons concern cattle and horses now, the messages and their deeper meanings are still as important as ever. The main thing, you keep your left leg on the left and your right leg on the right and your mind in the middle and you're all right. Investment advice. Everybody wants the inside scoop. But chasing every tip will drive you crazy. And it won't make you rich. A consistent investment program will get you somewhere. Find out about Janus No Load Mutual Funds. Get the information you need, 
to get where you want to go. Start to think big. Janus Funds. Five hundred to a thousand dollars cash back on select Kawasaki jet ski watercraft. The Grand Slam rebate after participating Kawasaki dealer until April 30th or while they last. We're in Northern Kenya being chased by a black rhino. Whoa! Woo. The thing to remember when being chased by a black rhino is that while they're great in the straightaways, they can't corner worth the beans. The proceeding has been brought to you by the all-new Nissan Pathfinder, now with increased horsepower, for when you want to get away. Things are changing, like the way we call Collect. Now, instead of zero, millions of people are dialing 1-800-COLLECT to save on Collect calls. Millions of people saving millions of dollars. Hey, change is a good thing. Anytime, any phone, anywhere. 1 800 Collect. It's the way we call Collect today. It's total court coverage that hits all the highlights with up to the hoop news and complete analysis of every game. It's Coast to Coast NBA. It's NBA Tonight, Tuesday through Saturday at midnight, only on ESPN2. As a quarterback, Bart Starr was a model of efficiency. As a man, He's a model citizen. He doesn't smoke, he doesn't curse, and when he orders a screwdriver, he tells them to hold the vodka. He gets his hair cut regularly, and when he played with the Packers, he often insisted that his teammates put their dirty towels in the laundry bin themselves to make the team manager's job easier. Now, don't get the wrong idea here. Bart Starr is no wimp. In pressure situations, he filled the soft spots with steel. But despite his steely nerves, Bart Starr has always had a kind heart. In 1958, the Green Bay Packers were the worst team in the NFL. Their quarterback was a shy, courteous young man named Brian Bartlett Starr, who seemed to be living proof of the old adage, nice guys finish last. We beat Green Bay 40 to nothing. And then Bart just had a miserable game, and uh, the fans were booing him in Green Bay, if you can imagine that. And uh, after losing 40 to nothing, instead of, you know, ducking his head and, and running for the tunnel, Bart came over and congratulated us. Great guy. In 1959, the Packers hired coach Vince Lombardi, a determined winner who had no patience for gracious losers. Well, I think that Coach Lombardi probably felt that I wasn't strong enough to be uh, the leader that he was looking for. He was volatile, explosive, impulsive, loud, abrasive, uh, nasty, if you will, and I wasn't. Probably I gave the impression to him uh, that I wasn't uh, as strong a leader maybe as, as he had hoped for. But what he didn't know was what was underneath. I really think that performance always speaks much louder than words. In 1960, Starr's steady performance earned him the starting role and the underdog Packers fought their way to the top of the Western Conference. While running backs Jim Taylor, number 31, and Paul Horning became national heroes, the quarterback who gave them the ball was ignored and often blamed for the team's failures. Belittled by his coach and bullied by his opponents, Starr's faith and courage were constantly tested. He stood up to the punishment and abuse with a quiet defiance, and even Lombardi soon learned that Starr's gentle nature gave no hint of the fire that glowed within. A lot of people mistake kindness for weakness, and uh, Bart Starr stood up to Lombardi every time he should have. I told him, I said, look, coach, I said, I can take all of the chewing you want to dish out. And I said, I understand your personality, and that's all well and good. 
And I said, that doesn't bother me. I said, but what does bother me is the fact that you're telling the team one thing, that you're expecting certain things of your leaders, of your quarterbacks, and you expect me to go out there and lead them. And I said, I can't do that if you're going to chew me out in front of them. I said, now, if I've got a chewing out coming, fine. But do it in the privacy of this office where you apologize to me when you know you're wrong. I said, otherwise, don't ever expect me to go out there and be your leader. And he never, ever raised his voice to me again. Competitive fires in Bart Starr were well banked and deeply hidden, but Lombardi fanned them to a blaze, and Starr changed from a man who used to lean on his team to one who could lead it.